Hey guys! In this lesson we're going to be taking a look at what happens when an AP loses connection to its associated controller. We'll be looking at how APs fail over to redundant controllers, and how we can configure our APs to fail over to redundant controllers we may have within the environment. If you'd like to read along with the lesson, you can find the link to our website in the description below. Having APs online and associated to a wireless controller is vital to providing a stable wireless service to users. Let's start by taking a look at an example wireless network. Here we've got 10 APs associated to a single wireless controller, WLC01. What happens if our wireless controller was to fail? The chances are our 10 APs associated to it would fail along with it. The 10 APs wouldn't be able to authenticate clients using Radius, or potentially not be able to provide a splash page hosted on the controllers. To rectify this risk, we've gone out and purchased ourselves an additional wireless controller for redundancy purposes, and we've called this WLC02. There's one problem though. How will our APs know how to join WLC02 if WLC01 fails? They could go through the AP discovery process using the standard methods of Layer 3 Broadcast, DHCP Option 43, or even DNS. There's one problem with this though. Our 10 APs will be disconnected from a controller for a significant amount of time, while they discover and join our redundant wireless controller. This isn't very efficient. Thankfully, we can speed this up and improve it. In order to combat the amount of time it takes for our APs to fail over to another controller, we can prime them with additional controllers to join. In essence, what we're doing is telling our APs which controller to associate to if WLC01 becomes unavailable. On Cisco access points, we have the ability to configure up to three wireless controllers on each AP. These are known as primary, secondary, and tertiary. This controller configuration is then saved in non-volatile memory so that they're saved and remembered after a reboot or power failure. Upon boot, our APs will then build CatWAP tunnels to each of the controllers that have been primed. The AP however will only associate to a single controller. The additional CatWAP tunnels are built with the other prime controllers in preparation if the AP needs to associate to them. This then drastically reduces the amount of time taken for the APs to fail over to the redundant controllers. In order to provide some context, let's imagine our APs are associated to WLC01 and primed with WLC02 as their secondary controller. A CatWAP tunnel is built to WLC02 in case WLC01 fails. In our example, WLC01 has now failed and our APs have used the pre-built CatWAP tunnel to associate to WLC02 with minimal impact to users. Now that we've got an understanding of how APs can be primed with controllers to improve redundancy, Let's look at how we can configure this on our APs. There are two methods for the configuration to be applied to our access points, either globally or on a per AP basis. Let's start with the per AP configuration. We'll be using the example we've used before throughout the lesson. To do this, we'll log into our wireless controller and then navigate to our AP configuration section by clicking wireless at the top. We'll then see a list of APs associated to the controller. In this example, I've just got the one AP associated, so I'll click on that to go into the configuration. The AP redundancy configuration can then be found by going into the High Availability tab. Within here, you can see that we've got the option to configure the primary, secondary, and tertiary controller. For our example, we'll configure our primary as WLC01 and the secondary as WLC02. Once done, we'll apply the configuration, and that's everything that's required to prime the AP on a per AP basis. As discussed previously, we can also apply the configuration globally. This might be easier to apply if you've got a number of access points in the environment. As such, we can do this by navigating to wireless at the top. From here, we'll then go to the global configuration under access points. Within here on the right hand side, you can see that we've got the option to configure our redundant controllers. As with before, I'll go through and configure our controllers here, and press apply. It's worth noting that the configuration doesn't need to be in both places. You either configure it globally, or configure it on a per AP basis. And there we have it! That's an overview of how we can improve the redundancy of our wireless access points by priming them with redundant controllers. If you've liked the video, don't forget to like and subscribe. Again, you can also follow along with the lesson over on our website, link in the description below.